talks about loving your neighbor. Um, this is um, part of the greatest commandment that God had given us. And I will read from Mark 12, chap chapter 12, verse 20 to 31. One of the scribes, when he came forward and heard them disputing and saw how well he had answered them, and asked them, which is the first of the commandments? Jesus replied, the first is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Brother um, Steve was talking about loving God, and my talk here will be about loving your neighbor. Um, and we will discuss this by first knowing what love is not, some misconceptions about love. And then later on we go on to see what is Christian love, which is different from worldly love. Um, loving God and loving your neighbor go together. There is, thus it is clear, if there is no love for others, there is no Christianity. First, what is not, what is, what Christian love is not? It is not just having positive feelings. Of course, uh, Christian love involves feelings, but it's not merely feelings or positive feelings. Um, love is often equated with feelings of sexual attraction, personal affection, warmth, but feelings ch change and thus this cannot be the sole basis for love. Feelings follow true love, but love is not equal to feelings. Next, love is not always saying yes. Those of you who are moms know that sometimes in order to show love for your child, you have to say no to them. That is also an expression of love. So love is not just saying yes all the time. Christian love is not guaranteed to be painless. We think of love as always being up there, feeling good, feeling wonderful. But Jesus himself taught us that in order to express love, you have to feel pain sometimes. And he felt that on the cross, dying for us. He was whipped, he was tortured, he was crowned with thorns, and all these as an expression of love for us. Love is not self-seeking. Our God is a God which is outpouring love, a community of love. The Father loves His Son, outward flowing love to the Son, directed towards the Son. The Son loves the Father, outward pouring directed towards the Father. And the fruit of the love between the Son and the Father is another person, the Holy Spirit. So our God is a community of love, outwardly directed towards the other. Love is not manipulative. It cannot be used as, as, something to, as something to gain or to receive something, or as a punishment. Um, you manipulate when you give love as a reward or withdraw love as punishment. Because love is so powerful, people are tempted to use this, to use it in this way. But this is a conditional form of love. And what we know about love, or agape, is that it is unconditional. This is the kind of love our God has for us. No conditions. I love you no matter what happens. Anything you can do will not stop God from loving us, even sinning. He still continues to love us despite all our sins. So love, Christian love, is unconditional. So what is Christian love? What does God mean by love? The answer is in John 15. Jesus spoke of a love that is connected with keeping God's commandment. 
John 15, 9 to 10. As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. Loving others is so important that God made it a commandment for all of us. There can be no Christian love apart from righteousness. Loving is not compatible with sinning or breaking God's commandments. Jesus was very specific about how we are to love one another, and we are not free to change or to dilute Jesus' direction. How does Jesus love? In John 15, verse 13, the answer is by sacrificial love. Those of you who have seen the um, Shroud of Turin, a uh, video about the Shroud of Turin, you can see this is the shroud that is said to be the, the burial cloth that Jesus was in when he was buried. And um, scientists have studied it, have bisected it, and you can see um, that they counted the number of um, strikes or wounds that this, this man, supposed to be Jesus, had, they counted about 2,000 stripes or wounds on his body. And he could, you could see the crown of thorns, and you could see the, the, the wound on his side. Um, all these as an expression of love for us, that Jesus had to undertake. Some of you might have uh, seen the movie The Passion of Christ. It might have been the closest uh, movie the, um, that we have seen that could have happened to Christ when he was here on earth, when he suffered for us during his passion. Most of us are not called to actually die for others. How then do we translate love into practical everyday terms? Um, and you can see in John 13 the answer, verse 1 to 5, is the foot washing example. Here, uh, Jesus washes the feet of the disciples. And you can see here the servant attitude of Jesus. Um, the foot washing is uh, something that the youngest slave is to do for visitors who come to their house. Um, as you know, during Jesus' time, there were no road pavements yet. So people who had sandals would walk the street and it was very dusty. So the first thing that the, the youngest slave would do would be to wash the feet. Of the, and, and um, this was the lowest position in the household. And this is what Jesus did. His message here was to tell us that if we are to love, we are to serve others. And our very Pope took the title, Servant of Servants. If our Pope is Servant of Servants, we, we too should follow and do love as a servant with a servant attitude. Thus dying on the cross was not only an example that Jesus gave, he demonstrated Christian love as service love. And we are to do likewise. And we are to do likewise. If we are to love our neighbor, who then is our neighbor? Who can we choose? Can we choose whom to love? The answer is in the parable of the Good Samaritan. Luke chapter 10, verse 29 to 37. Let me give you a background about Samaria. You have um, Galilee on the north, Galilee on Samaria, north, Samaria, south of Galilee, south of Galilee, and um, Judea, where Jerusalem is, south of Samaria. Whenever um, a Jew would go from Judea to Galilee, he would avoid Samaria go around Samaria. Why? Because they, during Jesus' time, there was um, the Jews regarded the, the Samaritans as impure and unclean. This was because in the history of Samaria, they were invaded by different pagan tribes who brought with them pagan gods, and this got mixed into their culture. So whenever a Jew sees a Samaritan, 
He is not even to touch anything that Samaritan has. If he does this so, he has to go to Jerusalem to do cleansing acts or rites. So that is how the tension was between the Jews and the Samaritan. But here is Jesus telling us a story wherein the Samaritan here is the person who does the act of love. And I think his message here is that loving their neighbor is not a monopoly of the Jews or the chosen people, but is, some, is a task that is assigned to every person here on earth, regardless of creed, culture, race, religion. We are all called to love our neighbor. How do we love in everyday life? Simply put, we know that we love if we are patient, if we are kind, if you are not jealous. So husbands and wives, if you're not jealous, remember that. <laughs> not pompous or inflated, not rude. We love when we are not self-seeking, but like our God, outwardly directed love for others. We are not quick-tempered or rude over injury. We do not rejoice over wrongdoing. We rejoice in the truth. We forbear, we trust, we hope, we endure. Love is a command that is essential to Christianity. Our God is a God of love who created us out of love, who made us for love. But can we do all these things? It seems very impossible. For me, I look at myself and I'm dying malik, sabuhaiko, and I find myself falling short of this commandment. But we are reassured here in Romans 5, verses 5, that God has given us the strength to love our neighbor. And I will read. Hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. So we should rest assured that we have the power to love if we ask the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. And so, to God be praised. Thank you.